In today's video, we're going to be surrounded by millions of stinging bees and do a cool science experiment, all so that we can learn about pollination. What's up guys, it's me, Mr. Bradley, and today we're learning about pollination. But before I begin, hit that subscribe button and get ready to do the starter questions on your screen right now. Hi there, you may have noticed that all living things eventually one day will die. Wait, I'm a living thing. For humans and animals to keep on living, they have to have babies. But let's not get into that right now. It's not like plants have babies, or do they? I had baby sweet corn. Yeah. But what I want to know is how do plants make more plants? In other words, where do baby plants come from? Well, they come from a seed, of course. But before a plant starts to make a seed, something called pollination has to happen first. Pollination is when that powdery yellow substance called pollen is moved from the stamen of one plant to the sticky stigma of another plant. It only takes one tiny microscopic piece of pollen to land on that stigma and boom, you've got pollination, baby. But how does that tiny piece of microscopic pollen move from one plant to another? Well, there's two ways, actually. Number one, the wind. Some plants let the wind take care of pollination. The wind blows the tiny pieces of pollen from one plant to another where it gets trapped in the feathery stigma of another plant. And the other method of pollination is by using flying insects to deliver the pollen. Yes, you heard me right. Beautiful butterflies and busy bees are actually used by plants as tiny little delivery drivers. To see this happening for myself, I got in contact with some real life beekeepers who were happy to show me thousands of their honeybees and the process of pollination. Let's go. What's up guys, I'm here today at Lock All Honey and today we're going to get suited up into a beekeeping suit and have a look at the bees, how they make their honey, how they pollinate flowers. Let's go. That's the smoker there. Five minutes or so, just, yeah. just so that you don't have... <laughs> Meh. It was at this point that I realised that I was about to be surrounded by millions of stinging bees. Okay, I think I'm making this look more dramatic than it actually was. In reality, the bees were actually quite calm. Jack explained to me how the smoke calmed down the bees. I was so surprised to see how gentle and friendly the bees actually were. And soon my panic turned to fascination. Why would the bees find pollinating uh, flowers in the area? Uh, so in the springtime, when there's flowers out, they would travel two miles away from their hive and they would go around and feed on the apple blossom and all the flowers around. They would yeah. go from flower to flower, um, spraying the pollen, spraying the nectar, and taking pollen and nectar back in wee sacks on their legs. You can see, you can see them. them just flying in. You can't see any there. There's a couple, of, that's one right there. Every, every type of pollen will have a different colour. So you might get a bright orange one, which will be, I think that's dandelion. That right. one there, I think might be clover. Clover? Yes. Yeah, you see them on the clovers quite a lot. So we're just going to have a look now at the, the honey. Look at that, completely white across it. Do you want to feel the wheel of that? Yeah, go on. <laughs> oh my god, I was, did not expect that at all. There actually is a big weight. I thought it'd be light as a feather. No. <laughs> yeah. So it's dense then? It's dense. Holly's, Holly's Super dense. Whoa. 
<laughs> now that is very heavy. <laughs> Bees love to visit plants, and the reason for this is because they get a delicious sugary drink called nectar that's made by the plant. And the plants advertise this tasty sweet drink with their beautiful colored and nice smelling petals, which attract the insects right away. As the bee crawls into the flower to drink that sweet tasting nectar, it rubs against the powdery pollen and gets its hair covered without even realizing. Then, when the bee visits another flower to get another drink of its nectar, it will rub the pollen from the previous plant onto its sticky stigma, and boom, you've got pollination. Once pollination has happened, and a tiny grain of pollen has landed on top of the sticky stigma, a tiny microscopic tube will begin to grow from that grain of pollen deeper and deeper into the stigma towards the ovary. Once the tube has reached the ovary, it will grow into the ovule. After this has happened, the male gamete will travel from the pollen grain down the tube and meet the female gamete in the ovule. When the male and female gamete fuse together, this is what we call fertilization. After fertilization has happened, a seed will begin to grow in the ovule as the ovary grows into the fruit. This is just like a baby growing inside a mummy's tummy. And that is the process of pollination. Recap time. Pollination can happen by the wind or by flying insects. Once a pollen grain has landed on the stigma, a tube will begin to grow down the stigma into the ovary and the male and female gamete will fuse together. This is what we call fertilization. And so we've come to the end of our video about pollination. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and check out some of the other videos on my channel. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.